All right, my dudes. We finally got news. Now, if that doesn't surprise you already, I don't honestly know what can. After the drought of Sonic news we have had for the past century and a half, I feel like we finally deserved the information that we got. Not only was I wrong about a lot of things, but also we did get it. Well, I was right about the zone reveal, but nah. Today, I'm going to be talking about Sonic Forces. Yes, it's no longer going to be called Sonic Project 2017, Sonic Resistance, none of that. We finally get a name, get a logo reveal, and gameplay. And I have a few issues with the game so far. My number one issue with Sonic Forces is the boost. No, it's not me complaining about the boost gameplay or complaining about why it's back, why it's here. It's understandable. Not only has the boost gameplay successfully created some of the most successful Sonic titles in recent years, the boost gameplay is basically a staple of the Sonic franchise at this point. Where would you honestly take modern Sonic from here? Yeah, of course, Zuka tried to change everything by with Lost World, but of course that flopped. And I guess after that failure, they realized they need to bring back the boost. Not only does it bring in success, but they know how to create levels around it. They know how to use it. It's a gameplay style that's been around for a while now, but they've come to actually be used to this type of gameplay and therefore create levels that best suit it. Stages like Seaside Hill Modern and Sky Sanctuary Modern are some of the best boost gameplay stages and they are still very open and have multiple paths, but still allow for many routes and many sections of the stages to go blazingly fast. Yes, I'll say Sega has done something right for once, but my problem with the boost in this game is how you perform it. No longer do we get a boost gauge and fill that up using rings, instead we are using wisp capsules, once again like in Sonic Colors to charge our boost. Not only is this gonna open up a whole new thing in the story about are they gonna be mentioned at all? Is there a reason for why there are wisp capsules again? Who knows? But back to the wisp capsule thing. The reason why I do not like wisp capsules as the boost is because the game is limiting you. Yeah, you heard me right. I think the game will be limiting you. Why would you say that, you may ask? Well, okay. Let's think about it here. If you're going to be getting the boost from Wisp capsules that are throughout the stage or whatever, you are basically going to be playing by the game's rules. If the game hands you a Wisp capsule, you're basically expected to go fast at that point. If you're not handed one, you're expected to slow down and do platforming. See, one of the best parts about Unleashed and Generations is that the boost is practically unlimited, yes. It does eventually run out, but you know, it does take a little bit to run out of the boost, since you're constantly able to replenish it. Using the boost to go fast in Sonic games is not a problem. A lot of people have this belief that Sonic games are boost to win. The games aren't boost to win, exactly. The best part about having a boost gauge that was always constantly replenished is that you were able to use that whenever you wanted. You know, if you wanted to go fast here, yeah, do that. But if you want to slow down, maybe go to a higher path, you can do that as well. Although when it comes to Sonic Forces, the game is basically telling you when you should be going fast and when you shouldn't. Not only is the boost going to be severely limited in terms of when you can do it, how much you can do it, all of that stuff. There's a lot of factors into that. But I just feel like it's a little bit of a step backwards in terms of progression. I could be very wrong, and I'd love to be wrong. But just from what I'm getting at the 40 seconds of gameplay right now, the game is basically telling you what to do. Go fast here, have a wisp capsule. They're literally just giving it out to you just so you can go fast for that one section. And then once you're done with the boost, they don't give you any more because you should be going slow here. I think my complaint about it is that mainly I prefer Sonic games that are more open-ended, more giving you the freedom. Fan games like Sonic Utopia and uh, Green Hill Paradise really give me that sense of freedom and exploration, like I can do whatever I want, I don't have to play by the game's rules. Giving you the boost whenever the game feels like it, 
feels like a limitation. And honestly, the boost should not be a limitation. The boost should be a privilege, a risk of some sort. Yeah, there's platforms here. Who cares if I have a full boost meter and I want to boost off the edge? You know, if I want to boost through those platforms and somehow take the risk of me dying and falling to my death and me messing up that S rank, I can. I don't need the game telling me, hey, slow down here. There's going to be a few platforms. You're going to need to jump. No, I don't need that. It's up to me. If I'm able to somehow jump, boost, drift, and keep holding the boost button the entire time and somehow manage to survive an entire platforming section like that, I very much would appreciate it if I could. Although the fact that the game is giving you wisp capsules and giving you boost when it feels like it and when you should be doing it feels wrong in its own way. Now, I know there's going to be a few people out there being like, oh, you only saw like 40 seconds of gameplay. Don't be such a fucking idiot about it. Well, excuse me. This is my opinion. I've only seen 40 seconds of gameplay, but I can still be entitled to my own opinion over it. Am I right? Am I wrong? Only time will let us find that out.